This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today the complaint is, is that the heater keeps turning on and it makes it nice and warm in the dining room. They're saying that just randomly the heater will turn on on this unit. So it's in the middle of the summer right now, so there's no need for the heater. She says, uh, the manager says that they set the thermostat to like 70 degrees which seems bad, but it's really not that big of a deal. These units are more than capable of handling that. And she says that the heater just keeps coming on. So we're gonna dive into it and see what we can find. So this is just a standard, I think 15 ton Linux, I believe. Anyway, so we come in here. There's no error messages on the board. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna look at the temp sensors. The unit has onboard temp sensors. It does have a conventional thermostat, but I wanna see the temp sensors. So we've got one saying 70, one saying 65, one saying 72, one saying 37. I don't know why this one doesn't show me what the sensors are for. Forty-five. I'm gonna have to open up the manual and see if it explains which sensors are which. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the error messages, so I'm going to flip the dip switch that says recall and see what we get here. Usually like the first three or four. 68, 68 I think that's actually a heating error, 52, 52, 52, so I at pretty much past that point I don't really care. So I'm going to hold this down until they disappear and I just erase the error code. So I'm going to take recall off. 68 and 52, so we need to figure out what those error codes mean. 52 is a limit switch and 68 is a gas valve. So we're in the middle of the summer, we should not be having those error codes. So something is definitely going on here. All the manuals are missing out of these units and there's an identical unit next to it and the manual's missing out of that. Um, this unit has the ability of doing uh, fresh air heating and cooling. Uh, it's air tempering. So basically it looks at the duct temperatures and I'm kind of thinking that's what it is. So you have the ability basically to set this unit up whether or not there's a demand for cooling or heating from the thermostat, it looks at the duct temperatures to make sure that people don't get a blast of cold air or hot air. So imagine in the Midwest where, um, you know, they might have really, really cold temperatures or on the East Coast, really, really cold temperatures. When they turn on the thermostat, they might get a blast of cold air when that indoor blower motor turns on. So this unit basically has duct sensors down in the ductwork and it looks at the temperatures. My, my first in, uh, thought about this complaint, because it's a nuisance problem and I've actually had another tech look at it and we can't figure it out, so that's why I'm here. But my first thought is, is that one of those duct sensors is bad and it's making the unit think that it's a lot colder in the ductwork than it really is. And therefore, in the off cycle, when the thermostat satisfies and brings the building down to temp, the heater turns on and it blasts the duct temperature until the thermostat, and I think it's just going on and off. Again, that's just my initial thought. I don't know if that's the case. I kind of need the uh, the manual to know what the sensor readings were and I'll have to Google it and see if I can find a manual for this, which I can, but, and figure out which one of those temp sensors and what they're reading because some of those looked pretty low when I scrolled through them, so. But we'll see. Um, what I did right now was I went down to the thermostat and I put it into occupied mode because it wasn't unoccupied. And I'm just doing things a little bit at a time. I don't want to jump to conclusions here. I want to do it slowly to catch whatever this nuisance problem is. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to recreate whatever happens. So the manager that's here is very specific on her routine every day. And that's why I, I'm asking her, okay, how do you do this? What do you do? What do you set the thermostat at? And I'm doing the identical things that she does. So she told me that she comes in, she hits override on the thermostat, which just forces it into occupied mode. And she turns the temp down to 69 degrees. According to the thermostat, the heating is set for 65 degrees, okay? So when she turns it down to 69, that shouldn't create a problem. I'm gonna wait for the unit to satisfy and see what happens. As of now, I have a full call for cool. All of my LED lights are lit up, that are supposed to be lit up, and we're just watching the unit run. 
the unit satisfied, at least up here, everything shut off and it seemed like it did it correctly because it shut off the third stage first, which would have been second stage, and then it shut off the first two compressors last. Um, and the heating did not turn on like I was thinking was happening. It still doesn't mean that's the problem with the fresh air heating, but I'm going to, or air tempering you can call it. Um, I'm going to download the manual on my tablet right now. I'm using the Linux Pros uh, app great little app if you guys don't have it I suggest you download it if you work on Linux units because you can find OEM parts diagrams and all the documentation you need so just look up Linux pros on the Play Store or on the App Store with Apple okay so I found the manual what I did was I looked up or I, I found the manual for the M16 circuit board and I found a tab that says display sensor readings and here's the sensors so what we're gonna do is flip the dip switch that says temp like I did earlier and then we're gonna scroll through these and figure out what these sensors say right now. So we flip the dip switch temp and the first one that we read zero is outdoor air temp. Okay, I'm actually gonna put this up here. There we go. So zero is outdoor air temp, that seems accurate. We'll push the button once, it says 69, that is return air temp. That's accurate because that's my building temp right now, 69 degrees. Let's keep going. Point two is supply air temperature, 68, that's accurate because we're satisfied right now. Let's hit it again. Number three, zone air temperature. Ah, that says 37 degrees. See, I think that that might be my sensor. Okay, so we're going to keep going. Point 0.4, my sensor and the uh, duct. 4 is 0. We don't have that set up. 5. I pushed the wrong button. If you double push, it goes backwards. 5 is 0. Okay, so that's not set up. Six, really shouldn't say anything. This is economizer, oh, economizer position. Damper position, 45%. That doesn't really make sense. The economizer damper's closed, I believe. Seven, indoor relative humidity, 50. I don't think we have a relative humidity sensor in this unit. That's interesting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, I'm probably going to turn fresh air tempering off. I'm going to look into this. Looks like we just cycled on again. I'm going to go in here and turn fresh air tempering off. Because I don't want that to even be part of the picture. We're in Southern California. We really don't need that. So let's even see if it's on. I'm going to have to go through the manual and figure out where to set that up. So I go into the IMC settings. And if you look right down here, fresh air tempering. What I want to do is disable that. I'm going to disable fresh air tempering. I want to go in there and check it all out, but we'll see. I'm going to make the set point disabled if I can. So I got to go through and remember how to get into here. So I went into the ecto settings and then I navigated to my parameter, which is 6.20. I'm going to push the shift switch and that's going to tell me what it's set for. 138 is off, so it's already set off. So it is not that that is our problem. Go ahead and change that back and go ahead and take it out of uh, Ecto settings. So the fresh air heating is already turned off. Interesting. Okay, so now we gotta proceed further. So my hunch was incorrect, unless there's something intermittent going on with this board. At a minimum, because we're in the middle of the summer, if I can't figure this out, we're going to turn off the gas valves and then give it a day or two and see if the problem persists. I'm having a hard time believing that the heater's actually on, but you know, who knows? We'll see. At this point, I've confirmed that the fresh air heating is not on and everything else seems to be working fine. It's running. I haven't put gauges on it, but it's, it's cooling. It's kicking ass. I still need to check the condenser fan motors to make sure they're all working. They could, those could be staged over there that aren't running. Um, but what I'm gonna do, so in my opinion, you, you have to make an educated guess sometimes. So yes, bring it up to the manager, 
you can include them on the decision making process. In this particular situation, I'm going to go ahead and make an executive decision that I'm going to change the thermostat. It is an older Honeywell Vision Pro thermostat. It's a really old one. And um, it was changed in 08, I think. I think that's what I have on here, 2008. I'm going to go ahead and change the thermostat because it's either the thermostat or it's the board. And the board is a heck of a lot more expensive than the thermostat, so we're going to start with that. Um, and then we're going to see if we have any more problems. Here's my thermostat. So it's an older Vision Pro. And we're going to go ahead and put in a newer Vision Pro. And uh, the cool thing about these new ones is I can program them over here and then just put the sub base on and snap it on the wall. So. Okay, so I'm going through the installer settings and I'm going to show you guys the trickiest part. I'm not going to show you everything. The trickiest part about setting these up is getting the zone sensor hooked up right. A lot of people can't seem to get those hooked up right. So we're going to go through. Okay, so heating system is going to be conventional forced air. Cooling stages, actually let me go back. Cooling stages we're going to change to, or heating stages to equipment controls fan. Okay, go through system change over automatic. I really don't change too many of these options here. Leave the cooling cycles on. Compressor off time on. Just leave it to the factory. I always change it to two periods a day. I don't really mess with the minimum, but I'm going to do it in this case because they keep ramping this thing down to like 65 degrees. So we're going to set the minimum at 69 degrees. Can't go any lower than that. Maximum heating, there's no need for it to be that high. We're going to go to 72 degrees is the maximum heating. Okay, here's, here's the zone sensor. So do we have a wired sensor on the S terminals? The answer is yes, because I have a zone sensor. Is the wired remote indoor sensor? Is there a wired remote indoor sensor? Yes. You have to answer all these questions. You can name it if you want. Indoor sensor, TSTAT terminal S1. Yes. Indoor sensor type, 20K. Use TSTAT sensor for temp control. No. Use indoor sensor for temp control. Yes. You have to answer through those questions. If you don't answer all of those questions, then the uh, remote sensor won't work. And other than that, there's really no more stuff that I'm going to change. There's a few bunch more things. So I hit done. Do you want to exit installer settings? Yes. So you have to go through those to set up a zone sensor properly. And if you don't, then it's going to read this temperature. Also, another tip. If you're ever navigating the thermostat and it asks for a password, it's that 1920. It changes. It can change per thermostat, but it's usually stamped on the back of the thermostat. And there's also a sticker on the back of the sub base. So 1920 is the password. If for whatever reason that 1920 doesn't work, take 1920 and add 1234 to it, and the four digit number that comes from those two will be your universal backdoor password. So, universal backdoor password, if the 1920 or whatever yours says doesn't work, you take 1234 and add it to that four digit code and you'll get another four digit number and that will be your universal backdoor password. Got it installed, now we're gonna install the zone sensor. So you still have one of these old ones left, but you know, it's not problematic at this time. The kitchen we've already changed, so. I also installed the new zone sensor. Um, another thing I wanna make sure, and I'm gonna make sh uh, talk to them to make sure they're not setting pictures of ice water right here because um, the cold from the ice water could be radiating onto that sensor making it think it's colder in here than it's supposed to be also. So I went ahead and ramped the cooling down and I got first and second stage to turn on so we know the thermostat's correct and the wiring's good. What I'm gonna do now is put it into test mode because the building temp right now is about 71 degrees and it's gonna satisfy really quick. So I'm gonna put it into test mode and then I'm gonna put my gauges on all the three, uh, each of the three compressors and then uh, test the cooling, make sure everything's good with those. This is my first stage. The sub is a little bit lower than what I'm used to seeing on these Linux units, but still my, uh, my approach temp is on point. They're calling for like 10 degrees. That's pretty darn close to approach on these guys. So I'm gonna call this first stage good and we're gonna keep on going down the line. Second stage, looking really good. Again, approach temp is right on point. Calling for 10 degrees, looking good there. So this is a really good teaching moment. The third stage, look at how high my suction pressure is compared to what my measure quick target is. What's going on here? 
Makes you think that something's up with the TXV, but look at my superheat. My superheat's pretty good. My sub coin's about where I expect these Lennox units to be. My head pressure's on point. What's going on? Why do we have a high suction pressure? You always have to know how to interpret your probes and know when they're being inaccurate. And in this case, it's nothing wrong with the probe. It's the placement. And I'm gonna explain it to you right now. So every stage on this unit, this is a, a slab coil and it's stacked, okay? Stacked in here. This is my return down here, sucking from the building. First stage is on the bottom, second stage is in the middle, third stage is on the top, okay? The economizer is ever so slightly open, so we're mixing some outside air. So guess what? Take your probe and move it up here to where you get a more even mixture of the real air. That or shut your economizers. Okay, but now watch. We're going to be on point with our pressures. I'm going to give it a second to stabilize out. You have to know when to check out your probes and when to know when something's wrong. Look at that. We're on point now because we're getting a proper mixture of air. So you have to make sure that if you're setting up a profile that your probes are in the same spot and you're getting the right air temperatures. Okay, and you see that difference? Now we're on point. And let's see what our... Uh, Let's see what our approach temp is. Approach temp is on point too, because they call for 10 degrees. We're right on the money. This unit is operating up to spec. Now, here's the other thing. This is a Lennox A for, or a V-shaped coil. Is This applies on any condenser. Where's the first stage? Where's the second stage? Where's the third stage? You need to know that when you're working on these units, okay? So, on this particular unit, the first stage comes through and it's the top half of this coil right here. The top half is the first stage. The second stage is gonna be this top right here. And the third stage is the bottom two corners. So when you're getting your air temperatures, if you're doing the first stage, you gotta get an uh, outdoor air temperature right here. And then for the second and third stage, you gotta get a temperature in here, which is out of the sunlight, which might be lower. I did a little diagram right here just to explain it. I try to draw these. So first stage is the top, second stage is the back, third stage is the bottom. So this unit is on point. Everything's looking good. Notice we have a 26 degree temp split, but that's because I moved that return air probe. Okay, it's getting that mixed outdoor air right now. If I put it back in the return air stream, that temp split's gonna drop down. And that's also going to affect our BTU output. But we're, everything's good on this unit. So we're going to call this uh, good. Tell them to keep an eye on it. Let us know if they have any more problems with the supposed heater thing that was going on. I don't know. So everything is good. So no matter how simple the call, we have to be thorough. We can't just run in there and say, oh, you're crazy and move on. Sometimes we even have to make an educated guess. And you have to kind of think, okay, what's going on here? What are the potential problems? And eliminate the potential problems to help you hone in on the diagnosis or figure out what the problem might be, okay? In this situation, I narrowed it down to, and I didn't mention it on camera, but I narrowed it down to a thermostat problem. I mean, a thermostat wire problem, a thermostat and or uh, the, the circuit board, the M16 circuit board. Um, I don't see a lot of problems with the circuit boards, okay? And I went through and checked some things, the, the, the fresh air heating and cooling, or the fresh air heating, I should say, or air tempering. Um, I went ahead and checked that, and that was actually off. That was my original hunch, okay? Took that out of the picture, so that left me with two things, thermostat wire or thermostat. My logic with the thermostat wire is, is that if it was a, a shorted out thermostat wire and or something rubbed together, I would think it would be happening a little bit more often, and we would potentially get um, a tripped transformer or something, too. But again, it was kind of a, a decision. What's going to be easier, trace down the entire thermostat wire or replace the thermostat? So I decided to go ahead and replace the thermostat because I do have a high failure rate on those older Honeywell thermostats, especially once they get older. We tend to see some weird erratic things, all right? Um, also, there was the potential that maybe they were taking pictures of ice water and putting them next to that zone sensor, okay? But I actually had a little test on that one, and I'll tell you um, what I did was... I was there doing some other work on some other ACs too, so I didn't say anything. Uh, I went ahead and changed the thermostat and then changed the zone sensor and didn't say anything. 
and let them operate like normal. And by the time I was done fixing everything else, it was probably about three o'clock in the afternoon. So they'd made it through their lunch rush. And I just went over to that area where I put the zone sensor and just without saying anything, just looked to see how they had stacked pitchers of ice water there. And in fact, they weren't even putting them there. They were putting them somewhere different. And then after I, I saw that without saying anything yet, I asked the manager, hey, where do you guys keep pitchers of ice on a regular basis? You know, when you're in the dining room, again, not in, not uh, letting her know what I was trying to get to, just seeing how she would answer the question. And she says, oh, we keep them over here somewhere totally different. Um, and then after she said that, I said, do you ever put them in this spot right here? She said, no. OK, cool. So, you know, I didn't um, ask the manager point blank. Do you put pictures here? Because majority of the time, the answer is always going to be no when they think that they might know what I'm going to ask them. So you kind of, you know, get yourself to that question um, and ask different questions to answer the question that you want answered before they give you an answer. Does that make sense? Or did I just like totally mind warp you on that? I have some weird logic in my head, but a lot of times if someone thinks that they're doing something wrong or their their employees are doing something wrong, they're going to say, no, 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 we never do that. No, we never leave the door open on our walk-in cooler, even though they've been having icing up problems forever and then come to find, oh yeah, they leave the door open all the time. So it's that kind of stuff. So when, even on a walk-in cooler, if I'm getting an ice up thing, I'll, I'll go ask one of the cooks, hey, does that door get left open a lot before I ask the manager? And the cook says, oh man, yeah, that thing's open all the time. And then I'll go ask the manager and the manager says, no, we never do it. And I said, but I'm confused because the cook says you leave it open all the time. And then, you know, so you see how I'm getting to those questions. Okay. It's just kind of investigating. You got to kind of look at the big picture and try to figure things out. Okay. So anyways, I changed the thermostat, um, went ahead and went through the unit, fixed all the other units that I was working on that day too. And, uh, it's been, it's been a while since that call happened and actually everything's been good. No more complaints. So I think I was pretty good on my educated guess on changing that thermostat. Okay. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Um, leave me some feedback, send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. And again, leave me feedback down in the YouTube comments. I really appreciate it. Whether it be good or bad, I'm always looking for criticism. I want to know how I can improve my technical skills. If you guys have something to tell me or a tip, go for it. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks again. And we will uh, catch you guys on the next one. Okay.